the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round. Joe's talking to Dre. Boom! <laughs> Back to school. <laughs> That's the <a> school. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe. And I'm Lauren. And we are the, the Narrow, Narrow Nerds. Nerds. Yes, that was on time. I feel pretty good. On, <laughs> I feel pretty good about that. Neuro Nerds. Welcome to the Neuro Nerds. And as always, I'm getting ready to start an amazing episode, very special episode, like I say all the time, but this is actually like super extra special, you know? So it's just a me episode. It's a Joe centric episode because Lauren isn't available to record today, but who I have, who I'm speaking with is a very special person. That's very close to my cold, dead heart. My very good (laughs) friend, Andrea, Andrea, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. I'm so happy. What makes it really, really special is I met you randomly. It was like, yes, completely. It it was, it was meant to be, it was meant to be. Yeah. It was Uh, a um, meet kid. I I was randomly, I wasn't randomly. I was um, emceeing an event uh, that coincides with like the Rose Parade down here. And you just so happened to like show up with your mom to kind of check out what was going on. And then randomly just started talking about stuff. And you're like, Oh, wait a minute. I mentioned, uh, I did a podcast about my stroke and your mom was like, oh, my daughter had a stroke. I was like, get out of here. And then we, of course, became instant family. We hung out. We started talking. And, and I found out not only are you a fellow stroke survivor, but you're amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it wouldn't it be weird if I was like, and I also found out that you were super boring. No, yeah. that would, <laughs> but that, that was um, that was about a year ago, wasn't it? uh december it was a so god it was that, yeah it was it, wow so almost a little more than half a year wow but that's it, crazy because you don't know it's funny i feel like i've known you a lot longer than that does that make that's sense what i was gonna say i feel like i've known you for a lifetime yeah it, it's yes yeah see we're, we're well because we're bonded by stroke family by choice Yes, exactly. Also, cool people are just like, you know, they're drawn to each other. And we are, yeah. I gotta tell you, we are very cool people. Oh, the <laughs> coolest. <laughs> so you had a very interesting stroke. Not that like strokes are like boring. All of them are really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, run up the mill. <laughs> you, you had a stroke at a very young age. Yes, I did. I had one when I was three and a half years old. Wow. Oh, my God. Dre. So young, so young. And I remember that just that that just touched me, you know, it was like Mm because I struggled as an adult. I'm a grown ass man, you know, when I had my (laughs) stroke and I just understood the isolation and the confusion. And I remember when I first like I in my inside, not outside, but like inside, I was crying. I was like just in tears, just thinking about what you must have gone through because I struggled so much as an adult. And you're, you're you're like a real life superhero. A very oh, tiny thanks. superhero. Very tiny, under five, <laughs> under five one. <gasps> you are tiny. I, I I haven't seen you I in just, so long. I just measured myself the other day. I am five eleven point zero nine. Wait, so did you, did you measure? Did you measure yourself with no. a ruler? <laughs> Get it? I because don't know you're how. Short. I just. I guess <laughs> I took one of those little measuring cups that I give you with a bottle of medicine. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love that. <laughs> oh man. So like we're in the middle of like back to school time. And yeah. so I, I, I had questions. I had young stroke survivor questions being an old stroke survivor. <laughs> so when you, I mean, but still young at heart. Oh, yes, yes. I, I, I am um, very immature. So that balances me out, right? You know, it's, right. <laughs> so going to school post stroke, was that difficult for you? Actually, so I um, my first day of kindergarten, I went with braces on both of my legs. So I didn't know life basically without my stroke. All I have in my Rolodex is a few ballet classes um, I was, cause my family traveled Southeast Asia before my stroke. 
Um, so I remember growing up in hotels and uh, riding on service elevators and yeah, going oh, wow. down like hotel hallways. But that was it. I didn't know how to interact with kids my own age and tell them I had a stroke because that was the only reality I had. Wow. Wow. That's were, were kids cool or were kids dicks? Because I kind of say it every other episode. It's, <laughs> kids are dicks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's half and half. Um, like half of the time they didn't know what an aneurysm was. They didn't know what the disability was. They're just like, oh, they're different. They're limping or whatever. And would treat me the same other times. You know, kids wouldn't understand and it would scare them. So they still wouldn't know, but they took the opposite reaction and kind of like just stayed away or thought, oh, she's just weird. I don't want to talk to her or play with her. What? You dick kids. See, kids are dicks. Yeah. (laughs) So um, uh, post-stroke, tell us a little bit about your deficits Uh, post-stroke. So... uh, my left hemisphere was affected, meaning my the right side of my body was affected. So uh, actually, I had my brain aneurysm like at first as I was coming back from ballet class. So ballet is something I can do post stroke. Uh, it's not something that I couldn't physically do, but like it was challenging. Right. Um, so anything physical, dancing, playing sports. Um, while other kids were, you know, joining soccer teams and going to summer camp, I was in therapy. I would go on hospital visits. Uh, but the good thing about having it when I was a kid was I didn't really know the difference. Kids are resilient in the way that they uh, make the best of whatever situation they're in. And I saw the hospital as my own playground. I was blessed enough to be treated at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, and they truly put the kids and the families first. They make sure they're not scared. They make sure they're in a safe, loving, fun environment. So the nurses were my friends. Doctors were my teachers. uh, Therapists were just, you know, buddies i'd get to like goof off with as well as you know do actual therapy with um but yeah anything physical was kind of on the back burner for me it's like if i really wanted to do it we would have to make accommodations um there was a a pair of tricycles Mm -hmm. at my elementary school and uh the principal at the time uh, was a very sweet old lady and her husband was a handyman. So he actually kind of like made a makeshift uh, strap for me for my foot oh. that would come on and off the trike when it was my turn. That's uh, so cool. That was, that was really heartwarming. That um, really is. That just, that, that warmed my cold dead heart. <laughs> <laughs> That's so beautiful. Yeah. So that, like, that's that's amazing. You're you're such a warrior, you know. So I oh I, I I really I I feel this and I mean this when I say that. For me personally, going through this as grown ass man, that's already been established. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do this. You know, it it was mm. just like mentally, it was so right. much the overstimulation, yeah. the anxiety, the depression, the. The, yeah. the, feel, the feeling of overwhelmed with like mm-hmm. just the most basic things in my day to days. I was like, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. That's as a grown yeah. ass man. You were doing this as a child, you know, yeah. like <laughs> it, it blows me away. You're such a warrior queen. You know what I mean? Oh, like, oh, it, thank you. I actually like, I, I well, I, I look up to you, not physically, because it's no, it's not, also been established that you're okay, very that, short. That has been established. Thank you. <laughs> but but I, I, I do. I'm actually inspired by your fight. You know, oh, there's sometimes it's it's hard as, as a survivor it, to compare. You compare all the time. Yes. Like I do to w- what I used to be. What yeah. other people I'm doing the quote fingers. The normies, <laughs> what like the normal people normies. do, like you know, I, I compare, like, I, oh, I wish I was able to do that, or I used to be able to do this, and 
I, I, that's the negative side. The good comparison is <gasps> like you, I compare myself to you. Like I'm struggling so bad and I'm looking at you and I'm like, wow, you know what? Andrea did it. And she was a child. What am I Aww. complaining about? You know? So you've actually, without even knowing it, have inspired me tremendously just oh. by being as awesome as you are. And I, I appreciate you. the heck out of you, you know? Oh, oh. And, that, that warms me too. Oh, your cold, dead heart. This is awesome. <laughs> we <both> exactly. <laughs> But I, I think it's so beautiful when we first met and we just sat down. I remember it was after the event and everybody mm-hmm. was kind of clearing out. We just sat yeah. up on stage and we just sat. It was it seemed for it, like we sat there for mm-hmm. hours. Yeah, and for it, hours. It for was sure. just such a beautiful moment. Your mother, who is just an incredible person. I love her dearly. I hope she's doing well. Um, oh, she is. It, it was just so, so nice. And <laughs> it, it, Andrea, you little rock star. I, I stress little. Stop. Stop. <laughs> You're like, no, no, stop. Stop, stop Joseph. Really? Stop. stop. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me ask you a question. We get it. Did, did you, um, everybody has that weird struggle in junior high and mm-hmm. high school with like, just kind of becoming the person that they are. You, you're becoming an adult, you know, you're trying to yes, figure out yeah. who you are as yeah. a human being. Did you uh-huh. have a difficult time in that transition from child to like young adult? One hundred and fifty (laughs) percent. I mean, like, so on the basic level, you have that. Oh, my gosh, my body's going through changes. I'm liking boys. Like, (laughs) what what is school? Like, now I have to think about college. Yeah, stay away from boys. Yeah, uh, that was the opposite. (laughs) But um, so there was that on a basic level. But then I had the, oh, my gosh, people are like, doing these things like going out and driving things i can't do and then on another layer which a lot of disabled people might not have the privilege of experiencing i was also uh doing the spokesperson work for children's hospital and children's miracle network as well as you know using it as a platform when i would do my speech and debate talks in high school and thinking about how I could extend my reach far beyond, you know, like my, my uh, capacity as a child when I grow older. Shameless plug for what I'm doing now. Which but that'll come later. <laughs> which is amazing. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. Shucks. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. As a brain injury or a stroke survivor like myself, it's hard for me to get through reading books due to my injury. But with Audible, I can now enjoy as many books as I want just by listening. Before I started using Audible, I was having trouble reading my brain buddy Mimi Hayes' book. I'll be okay, it's just a hole in my head. But once it popped up on Audible, I immediately put it on my wish list. Read Mimi's book with us. That's right, the Neural Nerds are forming a book club. What a great way for our brain injury survivor community to read books together. And even if you don't want to read the book we're reading, with this free trial, you can select any book of your choice for free. Go to audibletrial.com slash the Neural Nerds. Boom! Boom! Yeah, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it was, it was definitely difficult and especially in PE class because when you're a kid like people kind of like give you pass it's like oh they can't quite get their balance right or not all kids are good at sports but when you have to do these evaluations or like uh standardized drills and you see just how much you're limited Mm -hmm. it's kind of it it hits you in a very sensitive way oh yeah Um, yeah i remember the emotions were running high yeah i i almost cried a couple of times but (laughs) i was like i'm in public i'm at school don't cry right right suck it up champ no i I am an emotional being i cry at commercials andrea so i mean i would have been in tears (laughs) i mean we we cried the first hour we knew each other we did (laughs) (laughs) it was so beautiful though like it it really was was. you're you're, you're a member of my family and i love you dearly you know that was such a amazing moment in time um and just just hearing your 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 story you know just uh, again i cannot be more inspired with your fight you know what i mean and Mm -hmm. not, not only that like most of us survivors at a certain point, we're like, yeah, how can I help others? You, you've you been doing that your entire life. 
Thank you. I mean, it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah, it it is really beautiful because I was kind of handpicked, like not not to brag. I swear, not to do my own. Do that. Be arrogant. (laughs) Be like, yeah. By the way, guys, I'm awesome. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I am, but like, I'm I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm rubbing it in people's faces. (laughs) Okay, start over. So, like, I was literally asked by someone as. Uh, Children's Miracle Network, which is the umbrella company for children's hospitals nationwide and in Canada. Um, like, it's like, hey, you're good at speaking. Do you want to come with me? And then they just kind of like lure me, kind of like Hansel and Gretel with the breadcrumbs. Um, the, the, this, to, sounds, and, this sounds ominous. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, a little predatory. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it was completely consensual. Like, I loved every moment of it and I wouldn't give up my childhood birthing. Uh, so I just grew up public speaking. And so it kind of became a part of me, like my personal identity, who I am. So, yeah, it's something that comes very natural to me and something that like as a disabled person, it's like, why would you not try to help? other people in your community right right and that's what that's what i love about our community everyone is so helpful like it it's, yeah. it blows my mind it, it just it makes me it, it okay so <laughs> kids dicks that's been established <laughs> most people they're not the nicest people in the world we live in a very strange world right now our community yeah. and dealing with the, the people who have gone through what we've gone through it gives me faith in humanity you know, yes, because yes. All, all we want to do is is genuinely help others, you know, like along their way through this, like really strange, brand new world that we woke up into, you know, post brain mm-hmm. injury. Yeah. Oh, so I, I, I have <laughs> I want you to jump on board with me because I bitch about this all the time. So okay. you and I technically had an acquired brain injury, right? Yes. OK, not a traumatic brain injury because the yeah. traumatic brain injury is from an impact or an accident. Right. Okay. Right. Our acquired brain injury. Don't you feel it's pretty traumatic? Yeah. If I was older and I knew what happened to me, like at a, at an age where I was more aware of things, like I'm sure I would go through a whole lot more. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm, I think we should, <laughs> we, we need to change the conversation. It's not just acquired brain injury and traumatic. I think we had, we acquired our traumatic brain injury. I think that's how it should yes. be laid out because this is very traumatic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because um, speaking again on like growing up, like I remember crying countless nights in high school because I couldn't do things like I, I, I wasn't able to like go out and be with the other kids simply because like, oh, I can't like properly defend myself mm-hmm. physically. Um, and like I can get myself out of places safely because I can drive myself or just things like, oh, I, I don't look as good as Sally in like the pink dress. Oh, you whatever. know what? I can fuck Sally. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I heard about Sally? I heard she's a whore. So don't worry about that. You don't want to look like Sally. <laughs> Isn't this like a wholesome family program, Joe? <laughs> no, curse away. It's all good. <laughs> oh my god! Especially if we're going to talk about that whore, Sally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a good thing I don't actually know Sally. So <laughs> no, that that's that's hard. You know, that's that's definitely yeah, hard is. because you're you're amongst your peers. And all you want yeah. to do, especially in school, is <laughs> fit in, you know? Yeah. And and to to not feel like, you know, I'm just like everybody. Like that really, that really, really must have been hard. But yeah, you know, it you're you're tough. And I, I say this a lot to other survivors who always question why me. The why yeah. me is because we can handle it, you know? Yeah, they, no, exactly. And um that started for me at middle school and I struggled uh, with it uh, in high school like I said like I cried and had my bouts and everything but because of that I kind of like made my own like I crafted my own like image of myself and I said 
you know what? I'm different, but I'd rather be different than cookie cutter like everyone else. Absolutely. Damn right. You know, you're, yeah. you're, you're uniquely you. And that's amazing. You know? Yeah. And th- that that's why I love you. That's why you're amazing. You're also, oh. that's what makes you a warrior princess. No, not warrior princess. Warrior queen. Queen. Yeah. There yeah, you go. Yeah. Well, queen. Like, like Q-U-W. Like queen. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like hey, that, I'm, no. I'm, I'm trying to be hip and cool like the kids. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Y- your time has passed. Aged, <laughs> aged gracefully. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> There's nothing graceful about my age. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's abrupt, abrasive, jagged. <laughs> oh my God. Kicking and screaming. No. Oh man! So well, let me let me ask you guys. So about about school, did you enjoy your time in school? Yes, I love and I love no. that you said it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. On top of like being disabled and being a girl and everything, I was also Asian. Mm-hmm. I was, I am. Not yeah, like, I, like, you know, I, I was Asian. I'm not any longer. <laughs> I've grown out of my Asian. <laughs> I've grown out. Yeah, that awkward thing. No. Yeah, I'm I not sure if Asian. you know this, but Asian people <laughs> at over age 20 turn into Caucasians. Strange. Oh my God. It's, a, it's a little no. known fact. No. Oh my gosh. No. Please, please, no. Um, so I like grew up with the Asian standards of like, okay, you have to get good grades. There is no alternative. So I was so real. That is super real. (laughs) I I, I grew up in California, right? So there's every school I went to was predominantly Asian, you know, like where I was like in LA, I went to a job high school to King junior high school. So it it was like, like uh, Spanish Asian. That's right. about it. That was right. like that, yeah. was, that was the demographic. Yeah. So yep. I yep. understand one thousand percent. Yes. So I was good at school. I made friends with like uh my fellow Asians, and the high school I went to was not predominantly Asian. I mean, it did kind of get more so as I was leaving, and I was like, "Great, now you decide <laughs> to add more." Um. And that's the same thing uh, with uh, my elementary school experience as well. It was mostly uh, Hispanics, Blacks, and then like me and like five other Asians. That's hilarious. Um, So we kind of like grouped together. um, And like I had a good time with them. Like we we bonded, of course, through a shared life experience. Mm -hmm. Um, It was hard because like the majority i couldn't necessarily relate to um i mean you can relate on a shallow level on like pop culture and stuff but then like deeper cultural things is like you get to go out on school nights like what do you mean you don't do homework as soon as you get home um (laughs) what's a video game (laughs) exactly (laughs) um but like also add that with like the whole brain aneurysm survivor disability like that life experience no one knows about no, so no. yeah it, it's so hard so um me i i think we talked about it i don't know because i had a brain injury <laughs> 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 so i i it was hard to find other people like me other young right, right, brain injury yeah, survivors yeah. so like I went to physical therapy and all the people there were in their you know 50s 60s yeah. and 70s and it's like all right cool not in a bad way. It's yeah. kind of supposed right. to happen. It's just to you. like, yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's supposed to happen. Yeah, to you so, you're so old. it wasn't until I met my co-host Lauren where mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you're you're like you understand what I'm saying. Like you're, yeah. you're you're not just oh yeah that sucks. You're like oh that sucks because I go through it. You know, and yeah. it's a special language that we speak. You know, like we, we yeah. immediately know what we go through. Like, like yeah. when you said, you know, even the not fitting in. Yeah, I understand the difference of not fitting in because you're in high school. And I also understand not fitting in because like mentally you just can't relate to the other people. Like, I get that. Or it's more like they can't relate to you. It's yeah. These, damn, I don't know if these that normies that that's my nickname yeah. for people without a brain injury. Yeah. Normies. Yeah. These darn but, normies. Yeah. Like, I, I don't. Yeah. It's so weird. But um, yeah, I, I never felt that. They can't 
relate to me because like when you said like I can't relate to them that sounds more negative than they can't relate to me like do you know what I mean well, it's, it it's sounds because like, I'm amazing and they're terrible no is that too much I know <laughs> no 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 like it's along the same vein it's like I have more life experience than them it's it's the cheat so code it's it is. It's the right? cheat code that we have. Like they're worried about like insignificant things that yeah. don't really matter. We're on this other like mental plane where it's like, yeah, yeah we almost died, right? <laughs> exactly. So I don't really care about this little spat that you're having with this other person. They said this, they did that. Like all that stuff doesn't matter. So yeah. I, it's it's hard to get caught up in that where other people are like, this is everything right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. That that was. Yeah, kind of exactly my point. Yeah, you're, um, you're, and, you're an evolved person. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you to our amazing community on Patreon for supporting this podcast. You can support us too and get different perks and gifts depending on which Neuro Jedi tier you sign up for. For example, if you're on our Neuro Padawan $5 tier, then you're probably listening to this episode a day early before it's public release. Your support helps us grow and continue to create this podcast. Plus, a portion of the proceeds go to a different cause or individual in the brain injury survivor community each month. Sign up at patreon.com slash the neuro nerds. And again, I like not not to toot my own horn, but I guess I am. Um, <laughs> so like my uh, type of aneurysm, nine out of ten won't survive. Oh, my so, God. Like, See, see, we're twinsies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, so like, actually, um, so the mor mortality rate for my type of stroke, the hemorrhagic stroke that I had, is very high. Mm -hmm. So actually, you're even you're you're more uh, rare than I am. I'm like basically one in four. So three out of four oh, people wow. die okay. from what I had. You're you're wow. nine out of ten people. That's insane. Yeah. So statistically. Like most people won't relate ju just because of numbers alone, but also like, like what you said, most people my age don't have a stroke. That's yes. reserved for like people in their sixties, seventies, and beyond. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's so crazy. It still blows my mind. So I, um, you you were a baby, so you didn't know. Yeah. I, again, grown ass man, I didn't know what a stroke was until I had. Uh, yeah. it, the, the education for stroke is so thin out there. I and the more people that I talk to about it, the more and more I understand nobody, the majority of the world doesn't understand what a stroke is. A lot of people mm -hmm. think a stroke is a heart attack. Oh, that's that's what I thought. I was like, oh, old people have strokes. It's a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, no, like the reality is it's a heart attack for your brain. You know what I mean? It's when oxygen right, stops going to right, your brain right. is the stroke. Um, yeah, it's, it's so funny. So that's why I think like <clears throat> education is key. So like, we all need to, <laughs> we, we don't joke, but we talk all the time, you know, all the pamphlets they hand out yeah. at hospitals <laughs> for, for like strokes, yes. they're all old people Yeah, that needs to change. Yeah, it does because yes, like that it's, it's very high risk when you hit a certain age, like stroke is like, it's, it's, it happens at that age. But stroke can happen at any age, as proven by this conversation right now. I was in my 30s. You were three. <laughs> you, were th you were three years old. Mm. I, it still blows my mind. Yeah. It, a again, it turned you into a warrior queen. Oh, thank but you. still, you were so, so young. Yeah. Ugh. Um, okay, so the, the, the aneurysm. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Did you? It was just it was just one. Did you have multiple? No, it was just one. But the thing is, uh, so it didn't fully burst. I mean, it did. But like my brain wasn't like over flooded with blood because I had an extra vein. And that's why I was misdiagnosed twice. Oh. Yeah. So when we went to my local hospital, they said like, oh, it's just a flu because I, I was fine. I was still playing. I was just, you know. A little irritated. Next time, <laughs> next time we went back, like I was dizzy, so they're like, "Oh, it's probably something more serious, but not too bad." Um, and it wasn't until the third time when they did an MRI because I was having double vision and I was throwing up that then they were like, "Oh, this is what happened." 
Wow. So you had an extra vein. You overachiever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just overprepared. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So you're literally, you're, you're a miracle. Oh, you know, like I, I, I'm sure you've been told that before. Yeah. And it, you, you literally are. And it's, it's almost, it's not a miracle, but it was like a blessing how we met. I'm just so, Absolutely, 100%. It, it's just so cool. Like, it's just one of those things that's yeah. just, wow, we were meant it was, to meet. We yeah. were meant to talk. If you enjoy listening to this podcast, please consider leaving us a five-star review on the Apple podcast app. Your reviews help us grow and reach more listeners like you. Find us by searching for the Neuro Nerds on the Apple Podcast app today. And, and by the way, so you know what's really cool? What? So I introduced uh, you to a, a good friend of mine. Yeah. I had no idea that you guys have become really good friends. Yeah. She's so awesome. my friend Bethany, friend of the show, who's also uh, designed the Neuro Nerds logo, mm-hmm. um, and Bethany's been on an episode before. Um, yeah, you, you guys are like super homies. That yeah. made me so happy. Yeah. Can I also can I also tell you what it, what, what uh, made me happy? Okay. Bethany was like, "Oh, uh, Andrea, her mouth. Oh my God, the things that she says." Oh, yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I was like, "I'm gonna embarrass her." <laughs> I feel more betrayed by Beth because <laughs> I'm just like, I okay. So like, we are huge K-pop fanatics. So like, we get each other, but like, I don't expect like you to get like my level of crazy <laughs> um, oh no 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 you 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 understand i'm insane <laughs> okay so. but like but like it's a, it's a different type of language like we're both this is a worst analogy i apologize in advance like <laughs> we're the same hey, I, it's okay i love bad analogies we're, we're the same type of like asian but we're speaking different languages it's like close <laughs> but not really <laughs> so it, it, it's funny because bethany is a massive k-pop fan yeah and every time she comes de- comes in town because bethany lives basically she lives in the mountains yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so w- when she comes down she stays with us and <laughs> every time she's uh, it's, oh bethany's coming down um you know uh it's the first thing that pops into my head is oh what, what like what k-pop artist is in town because that's what she's here for she's here it, for I mean, k-pop it's concert. true it's true like i mean yeah, like I know because we talk about this and she's told me stories about like uh when like you would ask her about like certain K pop groups and whatever and she actually she, we did something she's passionate about that. Oh yeah, I, I am the same, if not more. Um <laughs> well in a different capacity. But um yeah, she actually tweeted something about like you were playing some K-pop song while she was trying to work and to be a brat, cause you are, you turn it up. <laughs> what me? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, cause I you're an the, angel. I am an, a- wait, I'm sorry. Let me move my halo to the oh side my God. real quick. You know, well, I, I, I would never do anything <laughs> like that. You, you, you know that. Are your they, horns getting in the way? Is that it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's th- those aren't sixes on the side of my head. They're nines. Oh so my we're good. Gosh. <laughs> we're, we're good. You know, I, I'm a very mature person. Oh, I would never do anything. Yeah. Like that. The, the classiest. Oh, okay. The, <laughs> the classiest, the most humble human being you will ever meet. Yeah. No foul words mouth no no so the the look on bethany's face when she was like oh uh, andrea she's like oh my god things that she i was like not my innocent sweet andrea i was like not not my my angel that's why i feel so betrayed (laughs) (laughs) so i I, you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna tell your mother oh please don't (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> your, your mom's don't. awesome she no she is oh no, such a no, sweet no. support system she is such a good person she like is, i was so but she does not deserve this i am her only child joe please <laughs> i'm gonna tell her and she's no, gonna be like I, I am, she's, gonna, she's, I, I am, she's gonna say i brought you in this world i'll take you, I'll out. Take you out i'm actually serious i just like there's a certain level of separation just <laughs> <laughs> I, I, w- I would not there, there's there there is there, there's a, a certain amount of like a life that you have to live away from your, yes. your parents you know yes. what i mean 
Th- there is. I respect that. Okay. For now. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the drop. I'm genuinely in fear right now. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. I don't think Felice would let me uh, do anything like that. You know. You know. I'm also afraid of my girlfriend. So I mean, okay, that. okay, okay. That's good. <laughs> she she dyed her hair again recently. Oh, it's it's like a a, a purplish <gasps> pinkish. Oh my gosh! Thing. I think I saw that on her Instagram. Sorry, that sounded it's, it's totally pretty, it's like- crazy. So I live vicariously through everybody's hair, seeing as how I'm a bald man. Yes, yes. <laughs> the, the only color I can have is like, I have a little bit of a platinum streaks in my beard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are just grays. Never mind. Oh, okay. I'm like, did you actually? <laughs> no, man, I don't have any hair. I would have done so much more fun hair things. Oh, I did used to dye my hair all the time, though. Oh, wow. Maybe that's why I'm bald. I used to do it like maybe, in a bad way maybe. with like peroxide. And yeah, it, it was just horrible. I did. Oh I my did. Gosh. Um, I did green, blue, all of the reds. Yeah. I, oh, so I, you I, went through the whole like catalog of Gatorade flavors. I I absolutely did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one of my favorites: strawberry blonde. Uh, it was kind of oh, cool. Oh. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was killing it. I had horrible hair because I was never really taught what to do with my hair. Oh, you poor thing. Yeah. So yeah. Oh no, it was horrible. There's so there's a poll that was going around. Um, one of my brain buddies, Bridget, she swears I look like Fred Durst. Don't it's I it's embarrassing. Don't kill and me, I, but I don't know if No Dre! No. Come on, man. We're family. Why do you hate me? <laughs> it's the picture, right? It's the picture when I had hair and I had like the douchebag goatee. Is it that one? No, I don't know who Fred Durst is. Oh, okay. So Fre- Fred Durst is the lead singer of Limp Biscuit. Oh, that's why I'm. That's not yeah, my scene. He, it is. It is. It's no one's scene. <laughs> but <laughs> no one's scene. <laughs> so there's a picture of me, and I have hair, and I have like this weird Guy Fieri goatee oh thing happening. Oh my gosh! It's like like the douchebag levels are so high. You you okay? So you know when you're growing up, you have to figure out who you are, right? I was figuring out who I was. Yeah. Turns out I'm not that guy. Yeah. I <laughs> Thank goodness for everybody that I am not that guy. <laughs> so th- th- there's that. I- I've grown into my personality. I've grown into my skin. You know, I'm, 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 I'm feeling pretty good about that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it only took you like 30 plus years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still figuring it out, you know, but you know. You know what? I'm proud of you, though. You do you, Joe. You do you. Oh, why, thank you. See, you, you just made my day. And uh, I think you're doing it at a protest too. Hey, I'm nice <laughs> Joe. He's not going to tell my mom. <laughs> I mean, okay. No, I was being genuinely nice. However, I would like to take that title as you have bestowed that on me. Uh, <laughs> but no, like as, okay. I, 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 I swear I'm not trying to sabotage your podcast. I'm not trying to take your title of host. But like, <laughs> tie, but like tying it back into the whole our community is better than yours because it, it's kind of true. Um, yeah, yeah, hashtag facts. Yeah. Um, like people who already have obstacles, kind like the petty stuff, the jealousy doesn't really get in our way because we already know what it's like. So we really give others encouragement and we we know you're going through the same stuff, like if not a whole bunch more. So we're like, yes, you do you, you go. I'm proud of you. Yeah. You know what? You, you just nailed the, uh, um, you just nailed it. Like you, you, that is 100% what it is. There is no jealousy in our community. Yeah. If one of us succeeds, we all succeed. Yeah, exactly. There isn't, oh, wow. That person's doing this amazing thing. <laughs> That's uh, I wish it, it it isn't that it's like, wow, that person is doing that amazing thing. That's amazing. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um, that, uh, that's what I love about um, Amelia Clark, what she's doing with same. Yes. Oh, my it's gosh. I so, love her. It's so beautiful. Yeah. The, the mother of aneurysms. Mm-hmm. The mother of aneurysms. <laughs> it, it's it's so beautiful. So I had um, a, a friend of the show, uh, Thomas Mejia, mm-hmm. a good friend of mine. He, we did this this great interview. It's one of my favorite uh, he podcasts sounds so far. So familiar. He, he's a super cool dude, and he had um, three craniotomies. He had like uh, mm. three AVMs removed. Like it's it's crazy. He didn't realize like so he didn't have anybody to talk to like in our wow. community. Wow. 
And so once we, we, I started talking to him and, and I was, I was telling him about our community, like, you know, it's us, like we, it's, it's this whole thing worldwide, all of us. He didn't know that community existed. And 20 minutes later, like after we had our conversation, he was like, how can I help? He just, he's been alone going through this journey through recovery by himself yeah. for over a year. He just found out this community exists. And the first thing he says is, how can I help? That's I think amazing. that's so telling about us, our survivors, you know, yeah. we want to help one another. We, yeah. we, we want to share in this beauty of like our second chance. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're kind of like little nuggets of gold. Like you find like, you know how you get uh, an order of fries and you find that one curly fry. You want to like savor that. And you're oh, like, yeah, oh my yeah. gosh. But, what, we're that's... kind of like that because when we find each other, like out in the wild, we want to hold on to like that connection that we've made. Absolutely. Like, like we have, you know, like, yeah. like you and I, like we are, we are family. We became family instantly. Yes. Like and I'm instantly. So happy. And I want that for everyone else because there's so many people out there who feel alone and isolated. I don't want that. Yeah. I know how that feels. I want people to have this feeling that I have every time I hear, every time I hear your name, like a oh. smile comes to my face, oh, you know. Oh, thank like, you. I, I mean that. Likewise. Like it's 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 so well. Obviously, I'm amazing, Andrea. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I get my humility from you. Exactly. We are the most humble people ever. <laughs> like ever. Like Mother Teresa, who? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, Joe and Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> it's Joe and Dre Day. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks to our sponsor, Avid Technology, for providing us with the tools, or should I say pro tools, to record, edit, and mix our podcast and get our message out clearly to the world. Try Avid first to start recording today for free at avid.com slash pro dash tools. Yay. Yay. So, so uh, speaking of going back to school, do you have any advice for any other young survivor out there who's just getting back into school? Uh, just do you. People are going to look regardless, whether it's out of, you know, curiosity or something a little, of, a little less positive. Like you can't control what they think, what they do, how they react, but you can control what you do and how you react. And that's something I, you know, I learned the hard way. And hopefully, like, you know, you kind of take that and run with that and like remember that because I, I wish I had when I was younger. Oh, it's so beautiful what you just said. We can't control other people. You're right. We can only control how we react to them. Yeah. And if more of us did that, the world would be a much better place. Yeah. Instead of focusing on that person said this, I can't believe that person did this. It's like, yeah, that sucks, but you can't control that. Yeah. All you control is how you react. So if somebody wants to be mean and a jerk, understand it's not you it's, it's a reflection it's them. of them they're they're miserable <clears throat> they're sad so sadly they want to bring other people down yeah. to make them feel like they're on top so don't allow that to happen just look at how sad it is that they have to be this way you know yeah like, i pity those people exactly or maybe they just don't know there are a lot of reasons like not everyone is out to get you like personally but if you just accept that they will find out someday and karma will, you know, do its thing. Then you will be a lot less worrisome. You'll be a lot happier. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we're beautiful butterflies flying through the air, living our beautiful lives while those caterpillars are still crawling around in the dirt. I mean, right? yeah, I kind of. Yeah. 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 I like that. Yeah. I like that. Those yeah. jerk caterpillars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, uh, well, they're not jerks. They're just like, if anything, like having a a brain injury or a stroke has given you, it's the gift of like foresight and yeah. just maturity. It no, it it really does. You know, it 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 really does. And it's how you attack it too. If you attack it being bitter and misery, miserable and angry, you're not going to go anywhere. You're yeah. going to be stuck. If you look at this as a blessing, and I know it sounds crazy. Yeah. You know, some no, people, absolutely. You, you've, you've suffered physical deficits 
right? Mm -hmm. People have suffered mental deficits. Me, I have short-term memory loss. I have tremors in my right hand. These are, these, these things all suck, but it's all a blessing because I'm here. Exactly. I'm here to experience this conversation. I'm here to connect with all these beautiful people. That's what matters. It doesn't matter that I can't write like I used to. It doesn't matter that I keep on forgetting really important things. That (laughs) sucks. It really does. But you know what's amazing? I'm talking to you right now. I'm yes. able to do that. Yeah. And that's such a beautiful thing. And I wish more of us would just focus on the blessings that we have as opposed to the deficits yeah. that we've um, encountered, you know? Exactly. When you live with any kind of disability, you're kind of forced to look at your blessings. And it, it truly, truly is a blessing to have one. Uh, because like I grew up thinking of something that could be devastating. And like what you said, it caused you and so many like others who've known life without a disability or without all these like ailments, like so many setbacks. But for me, it, it showed me the, the alternative, like the positives. Sure. I had my like fair share of like, you know, trauma and like depression and anxiety and all that stuff. Like, caused by it but Mm -hmm. it also showed me how beautiful it could make life because i got to meet people like you i got to see past all the pettiness um i i got to see like you know the the beautiful thing that like i could have not experienced all of this but here i am and here you are damn right i as oh my god andrea no joke I am so inspired by you always. Like I really am. You're such a beautiful person that thank you for. Okay. So like I, I I'm going to, at some point, if you're cool, um, have you on again, but like, I want to do it in person if that's cool. Does oh that yes. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I can make fun of your height in person. Wow. <laughs> that just but took I, a turn. <laughs> you know, it's the yin and yang of life. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I can't thank you enough. I can't <laughs> stress to you how how important you you are to me and how close I like I just consider Aww. you a family member, you know? And yes, how absolutely. much love I have for both you and your mother. Your mother is just an amazing person. And I actually love to have both of you guys uh on the show and do yes. like a you centric podcast. I think it would be beautiful to hear um oh, both yeah. perspectives, you know, of of a, a mother and a very young child and the fight till you know how you guys got here. Dealing with this idiot on this show. <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, Andrea, you beautiful human being. Thank I you love so you much. Oh, my gosh. Same to you. Love you with all my heart. I'm so happy that we connected because it was written in the stars. It, was it really was. You, you guys are just amazing people. You guys are my people. And, oh, and my gosh. I'm, and I look forward to um, uh, obviously spending more time with you guys. Absolutely. I look forward to having you on the show in person. And yes. I thank you so much for um, sharing a little bit of your story and, uh, you know, being an inspiration, not just to me, but to oh, all of the survivors out there. Stop it. Yeah, I, I know. I, Joe's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, truly everyone in our community has such an amazing story. Everyone is unique. Ab- absolutely. You know, and, and we are all in this together. I say it all the time. We are all in this together. None of yes. us have to do this alone. We don't because we're all here for each other. You know, are you a stroke or brain injury survivor looking for a community and support? Well, the neuro nerds are here to help. Join our hashtag Uso Rock Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Uso Rock to connect with other survivors like you. Plus, read other inspirational brain injury survivor stories on Joe's blog at joesorocks.com slash Uso Rock and submit your stories there as well. We want to hear them. And remember, you so, so rock. rock. All you have to do is reach out. And speaking of reaching out, you can reach out to Andrea at Ballin All Dre on Instagram. Hey. And, you know, she, she'd she be happy to connect. She's such a beautiful person. Oh, and you. obviously, she's super dope. You've heard her talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have not been active on the timeline. Like, I haven't had a post since June. But I promise you, I am there. I will get a notification. Feel free to DM me. I love talking to people. I'm also, um, if I can 
Shameless. Absolutely. Was, okay. So shameless I'm, plug. I'm also <laughs> um, a commissioner on the LA County Commission on Disabilities. So if you have any grievance, any concern, uh, if you just want to shout out to how amazing we're doing because we're pretty cool, uh, you're more than welcome to come to the um, the Kenneth Hall Hall of Administration in LA. We meet every. Third Thursday of the month at 1 p.m. on the third floor. Um, also, reach out to me about that. I love talking about anything and everything. Um, if you like hip hop, if you like Marvel DC stuff, if you like Harry yes. Potter, like yeah. literally anything. Um, love. <laughs> My co host isn't here. She's out <laughs> being amazing as she always is, but you can reach out to her at Lauren L. Manzano on Instagram. Follow me at Joso Rocks. Everywhere. Follow us, the Neuro Nerds. Everywhere. Dre, I love you dearly. I love you. You are my too. family. You are a huge part of this community. You are such a beautiful warrior queen. I thank you for being an inspiration and being just an amazing human being. And on that beautiful, emotional, lovely note, this Neuro Nerd is out. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>